Hey everybody, it's that time of year again. Everything outside is dying, so it's time to grow inside. You can see my tomatoes here have perished. And this is my 2012-2013 winter indoor hydroponics kickoff. So sit back and enjoy. Well, I'm starting off this year with a brand new bag of Hydrogen. This is a 10 liter. The last bag I bought was back in 2006 and I've used them year after year, just washed them off each time I used them. And brand new sheet of uh, Rockwool cubes, these are 1.5 inch. I prefer these right here, the one inch cubes, because I get more and they're cheaper. And they work the same. So let me show you what I'm gonna do to wash off these uh, hydrogen balls. You gotta wash them off before you use them. Okay, the best way I've found to wash your hydrogen to get all the dust off of it because you don't want the dust in your nutrient solution is to get one of these um, six inch uh, five gallon bucket net pots. They fit right on top of a five gallon bucket to snap on. I'm not going to snap it on right now. So uh, what I do is just take the hose and spray them off. Fill it up like that. And just take the hose and give them a good one. There we go. how cloudy that is. I decided to grow some Hoy tomatoes in the five gallon bucket. So what I'm gonna do is drill a hole right here under the handle, install a grommet and this elbow right here. And then I'll use this tubing here to have a drainage tube and this handle will support the tubing. One easy way to get a grommet in there is use some dishwashing soap. It makes it nice and slimy and you should be able to push it right in there with not too much effort, like so. And do the same on the elbow, put some dishwashing detergent and you'll be able to push it right in. Alright, drill a quick hole near the top of the bucket for the air supply line. And we'll feed the tubing through there. All right, next, I'm going to drill an access hole, or an A hole for short, to uh, be able to fill a nutrient solution without lifting up the slid and disturbing the plant. So here I go with that. rubber stopper from uh, American Science Center to plug the hole when I'm not using it. Okay, as you can see here, I attached my drainage hose and I'm going to cut a length right here. This stuff's pretty thick. Here we go. Now, I did a quick test for leaks and there's no leaks and you can see my water level right there is right below the net pot so everything is good to go. All right the air stones that I'm going to be using I was using big ones like this but uh, they don't distribute the air so well so I came up with this here you can see that it's just a, a splitter and two air stones off to the side I get rid of the air stones each time these are cheap and right now I'm just going to Put these in the bottom of the bucket with some hot glue. All right, do it just like this. The nozzle pointed up. And then hold it in position. This year I thought I'd try in the bucket system a tomato. And I cloned my Hoy tomatoes from outdoors. And you can see the roots are coming out. And I'll pick the best one of these three. They've been in there too long. You can see those roots are getting quite long. 
And let's see, um, I think this one looks the best. This year, just like last year, I'm sticking with my old reliable super air pump. And I have a pretty big collection of these aquarium pumps. And I'd rather use one air pump than five of these things. And for the tomatoes, I'm using Maxigrow right now, putting it at 1100 ppm. And right now I have a batch mixing in here. And you can see how well that air goes in there. And what I did is uh, filled it up just to the bottom of the net pot. So all the spray gets going in there. And also marked my hose there. So I know where that level is. All right, time to put the tomato into the hydroponic unit. And I'm just going to cut this little branch off there, put the plant all the way at the bottom, and then fill in all around the hydrogen. In this hydroponic unit, I'm growing cucumbers again this year. Last year I did uh, heirloom cucumbers and they're such a pain to pollinate that I thought I'd go with a different kind. These are called Diva. They have all female flowers and self-pollinate. So I don't have to pollinate. And uh, these I put in here oh, about two weeks ago and they've been in here too long. You can see the roots are popping out of the top of the rock wool and I'll just pick the three best plants and put them in this unit. And then um, for the, instead of string, I'm going to use this mesh to have them climb it instead of having to deal with uh, clipping them to the strings. Should be a lot more easier this year. Well, how'd you like that time warp? Here we are, 32 days later. And there's this Mr. Sleestack, and he's guarding all the cucumbers. Look how much they've grown. <clears throat> and that tomato over there, that's the hoy tomato. Look how big that thing got. That's just 32 days worth of growth. And what I did, I switched out the lighting. This is now a 400 watt um, high pressure sodium. And on this side, I have a 400 watt metal halide. Those are the lights that I built oh, a couple years ago now. And down here, I have a a rogue tomato plant that was outside in the 28 degree weather stunted its growth but uh, it's producing one tomato it's kind of like a Charlie Brown Christmas tree tomato plant um, so that's a uh, Van Wert Ohio tomato and hopefully I'll get some seeds out of that it seems to be doing fine now for a few weeks so let me give you a closer look at what's going on here all right, here's a quick look at the hoy tomato plant. If you remember last summer, it was the biggest tomato I've ever grown. And I wanted to keep the strain going. I saved some seeds from other tomatoes, but I need more seeds because one tomato doesn't have very many seeds. And this thing is starting to have flowers right now. And you can see how green and healthy it is. Let me show you the little buds popping up. Here's a quick look at the flower buds. And you can see them right there. I'm not going to cut them, no. But I am going to cut this sucker right here. Here's an above shot of my cucumber plants. As you can see, they've gone totally bonkers. And their tendrils are clinging to everything and anything. Like you can see here, they're clinging to the um, cords of the electrical for the, the lights. And uh, over here, they're just another cord that was just hanging there they're gripping to. But I did have one problem with these things, and let me show you what that is. And here's the problem I was talking about. This is a male flower, and back there is another male flower, and up here another male flower. But the problem is, this is a diva cucumber plant, and it's only supposed to produce female flowers and not require pollination. And I have zero female flowers so far. And looking up online, they say when the plant gets stressed, it only produces male flowers. So this may not be the best variety of cucumber to grow in hydroponics because hydroponics can throw things off very easily and stress out the plant. So I'm going to order some seeds of another variety that produces female, female flowers only and if uh, these aren't producing 
female flowers by the time those seeds get here. I'm going to rip these things out. Anyway, let me show you what else is going on. Well, it's that time of year again, and the seed catalogs for the 2013 growing season have started coming in the mail. Here is a Stokes catalog for 2013, and uh, this came in about two weeks ago. Here is a Seed Savers catalog for 2013. that came in about three days ago, and the uh, last one to come in was Johnny Selected Seeds. These are only three catalogs I've gotten so far. I usually get about 50. Um, I created a web page where you can just click the link to the seed company and it'll bring you right to the catalog ordering page. It's pretty cool and fast to uh, order catalogs all at once. And I'll put the link below the video. So uh, go order some catalogs because some run out like uh, Totally Tomatoes. They always run out every year. So get them while they're there. And uh, that's all for this time. So until next time, take care everybody.